John, Yochanan, Chapter 11 There was a man who had fallen sick. His name was Eliazar, or Lazarus, and he came from Beatania, the village where Miriam and her sister Marta lived. This Miriam, whose brother Eliazar had become sick, is the one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent a message to Yeshua, Lord, the man you love is sick. On hearing it, he said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may receive glory through it. Yeshua loved Martha and her sister and Eliezer. So when he heard he was sick, first he stayed where he was two more days. Then after this, he said to the Talmudim, Let's go back to Yehuda. The Talmudim replied, Rabbi, just a short while ago the Judeans were out to stone you, and you want to go back there? Yeshua answered, Aren't there twelve hours of daylight? If a person walks during daylight, he doesn't stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if a person walks at night, he does stumble, because he has no light with him. Yeshua said these things, and afterwards he said to the Talmudim, Our friend Eliezer has gone to sleep, but I am going in order to wake him up. The Talmudim said to him, Lord, if he has gone to sleep, he will get better. Now Yeshua had used the phrase to speak about Eliezer's death, but they thought he had been talking literally about sleep. So Yeshua told them in plain language, Eliezer has died, and for your sakes I am glad that I wasn't there, so that you may come to trust. But let's go to him. Then Tioma, the name means twin, said to his fellow Talmudim, Yes, we should go, so that we can die with him. On arrival, Yeshua found that Eliezer had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Beit Anya was about two miles from Yerushalayim, and many of the Judeans had come to Marta and Miriam in order to comfort them at the loss of their brother. So when Marta heard that Yeshua was coming, she went out to meet him. But Miriam continued sitting, Shiva, in the house. Marta said to Yeshua, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Yeshua said to her, Your brother will rise again. Marta said, I know that he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Yeshua said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever puts his trust in me will live, even if he dies. And everyone living and trusting in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. After saying this, she went off and secretly called Miriam, her sister. The rabbi is here and is calling you. When she heard this, she jumped up and went to him. Yeshua had not yet come into the village, but was still where Marta had met him. So when the Judeans, who had been with Miriam in the house comforting her, saw her get up quickly and go out, they followed her, thinking she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Miriam came to where Yeshua was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Yeshua saw her crying, and also the Judeans who came with her crying, he was deeply moved and also troubled. He said, Where have you buried him? They said, Lord, come and see. Yeshua cried. So the Judeans there said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, He opened the blind man's eyes. Couldn't he have kept this one from dying? Yeshua again, deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lying in front of the entrance. Yeshua said, Take the stone away. Marta, the sister of the dead man, said to Yeshua, By now his body must smell, for it has been four days since he died. Yeshua said to her, Didn't I tell you that if you keep trusting, you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Yeshua looked upward and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I myself know that you always hear me, but I say this because of the crowd standing around, so that they may believe that you have sent me. Having said this, he shouted, Eliezer, come out! The man who had been dead came out, his hands and feet wrapped in strips of linen and his face covered with a cloth. Yeshua said to them, Unwrap him and let him go. At this, many of the Judeans had come to visit, who had come to visit Miriam and had seen what Yeshua had done, trusted in him. But some of them went off to the Parushim and told them what he had done. So the, the head Kohanim and the Parushim called a meeting of the Sanhedrin and said, what are we going to do? For this man is performing many miracles. If we let him keep going on this way, everyone will trust in him.
and the Romans will come and destroy both the temple and the nation. But one of them, Caiapha, who was Kohen Gadol that year, said to them, You people don't know anything. You don't see that it's better for you if one man dies on behalf of the people, so that the whole nation won't be destroyed. Now he didn't speak this way on his own initiative. Rather, since he was Kohen Gadol that year, he was prophesying that Yeshua was about to die on behalf of the nation, and not for the nation alone, but so that he might gather into one the scattered children of God. From that day on, they made plans to have him put to death. Therefore Yeshua no longer walked around openly among the Judeans, but went away from there into the region near the desert, to a town called Ephraim, and stayed there with his Talmudim. The Judean festival of Pesach was near, and many people went up from the country to Yerushalayim to perform the purification ceremony prior to Pesach. They were looking for Yeshua, and as they stood in the temple courts, they said to each other, What do you think? that he simply won't come to the festival? Moreover, the head Kohanim and the Parashim had given orders that anyone knowing Yeshua's whereabouts should inform them so that they could have him arrested. End of John, Yohanan, chapter 11, 